This is the P50 Pro, a flagship phone with powerful cameras which came out in China last year and is now being released globally. There are a couple of things to consider right off the bat. This phone doesn't support Google services or 5G connectivity, so does the P50 Pro offer enough, despite those, to be worth getting over other flagships? I'm Will for GSM Marina, and let's find out in our full review. The Huawei P50 Pro is a flagship through and through, and like many high-end devices, brings a curvy, elegant glass design paired with a metal frame. The most unique design element here is the camera bump, which is divided into two symmetrical circles. It resembles something like a cassette tape. The phone also feels quite thin, and at less than 200 grams, it's easy to hold in one hand. Plus, the P50 Pro is IP68 rated against water and dust to help protect your investment. And you can get 128, 256, or 512 gigs of storage on the P50 Pro, and that's even expandable using a Huawei Nano memory card. On the front of the P50 Pro is a 6.6 inch curved OLED display. It's high res with a pixel density of 450 ppi, and there's a fast 120 hertz refresh rate too. This high refresh rate smooths out motions like swiping and scrolling, and it will dial down to 60 hertz to save energy when you're not interacting with the screen. There's also a fast 300 hertz touch sampling rate, which means the panel is extra responsive, which is nice for things like gaming. The screen is quite nice in other ways too. There's support for 10-bit color and HDR10+, and the color accuracy is excellent. Finding HDR content is trickier than on other phones, but more on that in a minute. The panel is also brighter than the previous model, the P40 Pro. We measured a maximum of over 600 nits when using the manual brightness slider, and this can boost up to 750 nits if you're in auto mode in bright conditions. And you get an under-display optical fingerprint scanner, which is quite fast and reliable to wake up and unlock the phone. When it comes to audio, the P50 Pro brings a pair of stereo speakers, which is an upgrade over the P40 Pro's single speaker setup. The output is loud, with a score of good on our loudness charts, and the sound is rich, clean, and nicely balanced, with pretty good bass as far as phones go. When it comes to chipset performance, the Huawei P50 Pro doesn't disappoint. It brings a Snapdragon 888, just like 2021's flagships, and the UI and heavy games run great here, as you'd expect. Like I mentioned at the beginning though, on the P50 Pro you don't get the 5G modem, so connectivity is limited to 4G networks. And as far as thermals go, the P50 Pro is about average for these sorts of high-performance phones. That is, we do see some thermal throttling after some heavy use. Let's move on to battery life, and in this regard, the P50 Pro is a bit lackluster. It has a 4,360 mAh battery, which is sizable enough, but the phone was able to score just a 76-hour endurance rating in our battery life tests. Unlike some other flagship phones, the P50 Pro ships with a charger in the box, and it's a 66-watt one. With it, we were able to charge the phone from 0 to 73% in half an hour. And alternatively, you have support for 50-watt fast wireless charging too. The interface here is Huawei's EMUI 12, and it's actually based on Android 11. The layout overall is familiar to Android users, except that here you get a separate control panel for various settings, accessed by swiping from the right corner. What you're missing here compared to a typical Android phone are Google services. You'll get something similar through Huawei's proprietary package, which includes apps like Pedal Search and Pedal Maps. Probably the thing we miss most here is Google Play. You can use Huawei's App Store, but it comes with ads, and some popular apps and games aren't available. You can find alternative apps with almost the same names, but don't expect the same quality. And they may have banner ads too. You can also sideload the real apps through APKs, and the search function can directly find the APKs online for you. Even so, you can't get apps that rely on Google's mobile services to work right. And on top of that, you can't make great use of the HDR screen due to lack of support by Netflix, Prime Video, or YouTube. At least you can access YouTube through the browser, but it doesn't work as well as on the app. For example, you get black bars on the sides of the video. Still, Huawei has made progress with their own backbone services for developers, and the number of publishers on App Gallery is growing. Finally, we've made it to the P50 Pro's cameras. There's a 50 megapixel main cam with OIS, a 40 megapixel monochrome camera, a 13 megapixel ultra wide, and a 64 megapixel telephoto camera with 3.5 times optical zoom and OIS. During the day, the main cam takes outstanding 12.5 megapixel photos. 
Images look balanced and natural with true-to-life colors, abundant detail, and just the right amount of sharpening. Contrast is excellent, and dynamic range is impressive. The main cam is also the primary portrait shooter, and these are brilliant. Separation is proficient, and subjects are detailed and sharp. The monochrome camera also captures photos in 12.5 megapixels to keep things consistent. Its black and white photos are stunning, with magnificent detail and amazing contrast. The ultra-wide cam is quite capable during the day. Its photos are sharp and detailed enough, and like the main cam, have excellent contrast and colors and great dynamic range. This camera has autofocus and it's not always on point, resulting in the occasional soft photo. Tapping the viewfinder to refocus before shooting seems to prevent that. And thanks to the autofocus, you can use the ultra-wide to take close-up macro shots. These are detailed, sharp, and contrasty, with well-preserved colors. The P50 Pro's telephoto camera provides 3.5 times optical zoom, and these 16 megapixel photos are exceptional. There's high resolve detail, and foliage looks great, with balanced sharpening. Contrast is excellent, colors are accurate, and there's no visible noise. Dynamic range is superb too. There's also a 7 times lossless zoom, created by cropping from the center of the original 64 megapixel image. These provide the same great quality as the lower zoom level, except that they aren't quite as sharp. 10 times zoom on the viewfinder is achieved through upscaling, so the detail level and sharpness are a bit lower. Still, the other qualities like colors, contrast, and dynamic range remain great. Now on to low light photos. While many phones rely on a night mode to produce good nighttime shots, Huawei has integrated such processing into its regular auto mode. Photos from the main cam are brilliant with plenty of detail, great exposure, outstanding color saturation, and excellent dynamic range. Blown highlights are rare, and shadows look natural. There is still a night mode you can toggle, but its effects are pretty minimal. It brightens up some shadows in the skies, adds some color saturation, and if there were any clipped highlights, it fixes them. The monochrome camera takes great nighttime photos with a balanced exposure, plenty of detail, and admirable contrast. There are plenty of clipped highlights due to the more contrasty look, but they actually add a stylistic effect. Ultra-wide cameras aren't known for good performance in the dark, but the P50 Pros is an exception. These shots are great with punchy colors, good contrast and exposure, and low noise. Night mode doesn't do much here, except that it might make the colors pop a bit more. If you zoom in the dark, the phone may use the telephoto, or it might decide to make a crop from the main cam if the scene is too dark. If it does use the zoom lens, the results are sharp enough, and you get adequate detail, good exposure, low noise, and excellent color saturation. Turning on night mode may improve the sharpness and colors in some scenarios, but the difference isn't huge. Zooming at 10 times will get you alright results with low noise and good exposure and colors, but the detail level isn't great. Again, night mode doesn't make a big difference. It can occasionally improve the sharpness and brightness of the photo though. On to selfies. These are taken with a 13 megapixel front facing cam, which has autofocus and a wide field of view. In the native wide angle mode, these are among the best selfies we've seen from a phone. They're incredibly sharp and detailed, with accurate colors, superb contrast, and great dynamic range. The 0.8x toggle is a crop from the wide angle photo, and you can't tell that there's digital zoom going on. They're as sharp and excellent as the default pictures. Finally, there's the 1x toggle, which is just a bigger crop. In this case, you can notice a drop in sharpness, but the quality is still fantastic overall. The P50 Pro can record video in up to 4K with all of its cameras, and electronic stabilization is always on. The main cam's footage is pretty good, though it seems the sharpness takes a hit from the EIS. Still, there's enough detail and a balanced look, with accurate colors, good contrast, and above average dynamic range. Video quality from the monochrome camera is outstanding. It's detailed, with a natural look, and superb contrast and dynamic range. 4K clips from the ultra wide are good too. They have enough detail, and the colors are accurate, though more contrast would have been nice here. The telephoto can capture clips at either 4 times or 10 times zoom. At 4 times, the quality is excellent, with more than enough detail, good sharpness, realistic colors, commendable contrast, and wide dynamic range. 10 times zoom videos are softer and the level of detail is less. Otherwise, they have good contrast and accurate colors. So that's the Huawei P50 Pro. The main benefit you get here are these cameras. They're some of the best we've seen on a smartphone yet. 
There are also nice flagship features like a waterproof build, a curved high refresh rate OLED, stereo speakers, a high-end chipset, and fast charging. However, these sorts of features can be found on other flagships too. And besides not having Google support or 5G connectivity, the P50 Pro's battery life is mediocre, and its launch price is no less than the competition. Still, if you're a fan of Huawei, or you're just trying to step outside of the Google and Apple ecosystems, the P50 Pro is a nice flagship that has a lot to offer. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay safe and see you on the next one.